in a perfect world, but there are going to be lots of scenarios that you're not going to have that opportunity. That's true. You know, where you're going to have to learn how to, you know, prepare on your own. Yeah. You know, even if that means, you know, having, you know, somebody to run lines with, you know, just to kind of get the vibe or, you know, you're thinking about the scene, thinking about the jokes, thinking about, you know, what, what I can do at my audition mm -hmm. to prepare you know, when you're dealing with a comedy, you still have to sort of figure out, like, let's assume that you're by yourself. You still have to figure out on your own, you know, what your jokes are and maybe plan a punchline here or there or whatever. But, yeah. um, you know, there's only so much you can do by yourself, of course, but it, it's, it's going to happen and you're going to have to learn how to practice on your own. So most of the time, you know, unless you have somebody accessible to you to run lines with you just to get the vibe, a lot of the preparation is going to be by yourself. How do I practice that? Well, by thinking about the material, really getting connected to the material, thinking about, you know, what this woman meant to you, what, what, what I mean to you, how do you feel about what I'm telling you? Do you really understand, you know, what I'm talking about? Has, have, have I ever, you know, if I'm, if I'm a good friend of yours, have I ever done anything like this before? You know, there's a, the, our relationship, you know, like improv. well, yeah, improv stuff. Absolutely. And, and making sure that you have a connection to the material personally so that you can kind of connect to it. Like where, where have you felt anything like this? Have you ever been in a position where, you know, somebody, you said something to somebody and they thought it was code, you know, and they just weren't listening and you're just like, Hey, now if not, then you can kind of imagine what it would be like to have somebody that you're talking to and you keep trying to make them understand something and they think that you're speaking in code. Yeah. I mean, you need to learn how to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. So when you're practicing it, if you do have somebody who can run lines with you, yeah, great, that's fine. But you want to have these lines accessible so well that you can do them in your sleep. But as you're practicing the lines by yourself and you're kind of mouthing the words and kind of imagining you're not, you're not acting full out while you're by yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're asking yourself questions like, okay, do I understand what I'm talking about? How do I feel about what he said? Do I know what he's talking about? Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe you even have had and maybe do an improv or two where, you know, you were at her computer and you're tempted to check her emails and you don't do that. And it's like, I'm not, I don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, relationships are built on trust and I don't do that. Yeah. That's true. As you know, as a setup for this. Mm -hmm. So the more that you can bring an innocence and a lost and confused, kind of like I'm surrounded by crazy people um, vibe, the funnier it's going to be. Mm. But, you, but you know, Brad, in the book, uh, Dawn, Dawn says, um, when you're practicing, like, do, doesn't that carry risk of me starting to watch myself? Well, that's why I'm saying when you do it by yourself, you're not going to act it al alone full out. So when you're doing it by yourself, you're more like, she was like dressed, you know, however you want to dress, you know, and just thinking about how this sounds and how I feel. Do I understand what I'm talking about? You know, do whatever yeah. you want to do. I'm, I don't, how do I feel about that? I don't want the relationship. I don't want the relationship. Oh, like that. So this is what I'm doing. And then I'm kind of hearing her say, I'm hearing Gary say that. And then, you know, I'm saying, I mean, I'm, I'm Gary saying that. And then I hear Johnny say whatever. And then I hear that. And I'm not sure what I feel about him saying whatever, but okay. Anyway, and I'm just like, you know, you're done with the relationship. And then, and then I'm looking at Gary and imagining, he says, well, you're, you're obviously heard about. And, and yeah, yeah I'm like, do you understand? You see what I'm doing? Yeah. So you're not thinking too much about how you sound. And stuff. No, I don't want to think at all about how I sound. You shouldn't be doing that anyway even if you're acting in the scene with an actor. Yeah. So you got to do that, but you got to do, you know, but I'm not fully going for it in the scene because then of course you're going to run the risk of duplicating that when you're, you know, doing it with Greg or, or even duplicating it, you know, when you're not with Greg with your casting director and you're not even acting with anybody, you're acting with yourself. Yeah. So you've got to save the actual run, the full on run for me. You're going to hold back. Even when you're with Greg, you're not going to go full out. You're going to hold back a little bit, even when you're with him, so yeah. that you can save the golden, the golden one yeah. for the real deal. 
But when I say a line like, you know, well, you're obviously hurt. When, when I say to you, well, you're obviously hurt about it. And I, you hear that as Gary, like, how do you, how do you feel about him saying, well, you're obviously hurt about it? Does he, is he even listening? <laughs> you know, uh, is he trying to be like my therapist? And then she got to you, you're hurt. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing to be ashamed of. She, she hurt you. Well, what the, no shit, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm hurt. No, I'm not hurt. So this is what I'm doing when I'm practicing it by myself. Okay, that makes so much sense.